Defenestration. The act of throwing someone through a window. It was yet another bleak day for John Hus, in a life already full of bleakness. Born a dirt poor peasant in 15th century Bohemia, studying to be a priest seemed to show some promise in life, but all the Catholic Church had to offer was hypocrisy, corruption and obedience to a decadent medoid quasi-king in Rome. The Pope, or anti-Pope, hard to keep it straight, was again crusading against Christians, burning books that criticized him and demanding bribes to absolve sins, which all deeply disgusted us. Jean, excommunicated for saying the truth too loudly, became famous for preaching against all this corrupt and scriptural crap. All in Czech, no less, teaching both Latin and the Vatican, acknowledging only Jesus Christ as a spiritual authority. So butthurt who's made the papists that once the unholy German confederate had an ecumenical council going, they went for it. John Hus of course had been invited, and while taking a break from preaching against Catholicism to writing against Catholicism, he heard a knock on his door. It was the papists. He was under arrest. Thrown in chains in a dungeon for 73 days and put on trial with no right to a lawyer, Jean Hus refused to give in to Catholic demands, saying he would only recant if they proved that what he preached was unscriptural. Jean Hus was then burned at the stake, dying as he prayed away. And while Hus was dead, the Hussites had just been born. Those being Bohemians sympathetic to John Hus's teachings, among them another priest, Jan Jalivsky. Just as popular as Hus, Jalivsky used his fame to rally the Hussites of Prague into a mob, rallying them against Prague's town hall, that is, where papist elites had been imprisoning innocent Hussites for far too long. Being treacherous Catholic vermin, one of the council members threw a rock at Jalivsky, right in the head. And as they all laughed about it, Zielewski broke through the town hall, took it over with his suicide mob, and once he had all papists on the ground, he chose to keep them on the ground. The actual ground. All counselors were defenestrated to their deaths, and when the king of Bohemia was informed, he was so taken aback he had a heart attack, and died too. Such is the tale of how the Hussite War started, with the first defenestration of Prague. Sixty years later, the Hussites have only grown stronger. The Catholic Church was as shit as ever, Bohemia had just come out of a war and found itself with a pro-Catholic king of all fates. With the Hussites now duly represented in government, it drove the Catholic king so mad he had them all fired and replaced by Catholic shields. Among the purged Hussites were party members of the communion of both kinds, preaching the scriptural truth that both bread and wine were needed for communion. Refusing to let papist tyrants ruin their rituals, the Hussites revolted again, took over the local town hall and after killing every last councillor except the mayor, they let precedent speak for itself. His appointees dead, and facing Hussite revolts left and right, the Bohemian king gave up, guaranteeing the Hussites religious freedom and equality to the Catholic dogs, at least in words. Czech intellectuals still debate over the officialness of this defenestration, since it sadly didn't plunge the papists into decades of brutal war, you see. After two centuries of Bohemian kings being made the Hussite bitch, the then king had written the Letter of Majesty, officially codifying the Hussite right to religious freedom and autonomy. But you see, the reason this particular king is so ugly is because he was a member of the Habsburg dynasty, a disgusting breed of humanoid creatures the Pope had inbred in a laboratory to show Catholicism on Europe. Always loyal to the Vatican, the Habsburgs came to have the king succeeded by another one, who also bent over to the Hussites' demands. Regardless, being a defective prototype, he named his Catholic pig of a nephew, Ferdinand, to succeed him as king. In his papist arrogance, Ferdinand fully forbid the construction of all Hussite churches, already violating their rights. And when the Hussite lords went to their assembly to complain, led by the war veteran, Lord Fern, the sound of truth and righteousness so angered Ferdinand he had the assembly dissolved. To make it worse, the Hussites then learned of a letter sent to Catholic officials, proclaiming the lives of the Hussite lords to be forfeit, doomed to execution. Right after, Fern gathered the Hussite lords to meet with four prominent Catholic leaders in Bohemia, plus their secretary, Fabricius. 
begrudgingly attending the meeting, the papist vermin were met by many indignated Hussite lords, who wanted to know which of them was a part of the plot against them. As they interrogated them, Fern proclaimed aloud, as they intend to execute us, we came to the unanimous agreement we would stand firm, with all for one and one for all, against all difficulties. As the papists were questioned, incapable of any independent thought as they were, they begged to ask their superiors what to think and say, but they were denied. Eventually it became clear two of the papists knew nothing of value, and so were let go, leaving only the hardliners, one of which had stolen Fern's previous noble title. So arrogant they were that they straight up admitted guilty that they had advised the king to put them to death, daring the Hussites to punish them. Cause after all, what were they gonna do to important Catholic nobles? Find them? Imprison them? Yes, but I hear you ask. What happened to Fabricius, their secretary? The papist dogs survived though, they all did, having landed on a nearby dung heap. That is, a pile of horse shit. Papist propaganda would say angels saved them, but we know the shitty truth. For having survived the fall, Fabricius was honored by the unholy German confederate with the title Baron von Hohenfall, Baron of Highfall. Here starts the Thirty Years' War. 330 years later, in Bohemia, now Czechia, plus Slovakia, Jan Masaryk had a bleak night, in a life already full of bleakness. Not only had his country been invaded and taken over by Nazis some years ago, forcing the government in exile's foreign minister, him, to literally be foreign, but just as he got liberated he was now being taken over by commies, with him being the only minister left who was not a commie. As he was about to take a shit in his apartment, someone knocked on his bathroom door. It was communists, 